the burden of non diabetic ckd and the cardiac renal connections the majority of the ckd patients are non diabetic it is around 58% which uh, this has been published in kidney international in 2018 and 42% of the patients who are suffering from ckd they are diabetic only and if you see the 58% of the non diabetic uh, kidney disease patients 18% are because of hypertension 18% are because of glomerular nephritis and others are uh, 22% the most ckd patients die before progressing to end stage renal disease and the cvd is the leading leading cause of the death the probability uh, probability of the death or the dialysis uh, over a 5 year period in ckd patients if you see uh, 12% of the people they reach to the stage of dialysis after 5 years and 33% of the people they die before 5 uh, year uh, of ckd and in the risk of mortality according to the cause among the ckd patient the cvd is the most common cause which has been found the number of deaths during the follow up and uh, then is the others and third is the cancer and lastly the infections and if you see the relative percentage of the cardiovascular related deaths increases with the worsening of the egfr accounting for about 45% death at ckd stage 4 if you see there is a close uh, and specific association between the cardiac and the renal physiology Now, if you see in chronic heart failure, there is decreased cardiac output, decreased renal blood flow, decreased EGFR and albumin urea, and this leads to progression of the kidney disease. And kidney disease in turn causes decreased renal function and retention of sodium and water, and there is decreased cardiac performance and the precipitation of the heart failure. So there is association between uh, cardio renal connections. The CV events increases the risk of ckd and the ckd risk increases the risk of cv events there is a close and specific association between cardiac and the renal physiology the risk of the cvd and the cv mortality increases with the progression of the ckd in later ckd stages the non atherosclerotic causes are the most common uh, it dominates in the non atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease lvh arrhythmia sudden cardiac death arterial calcification hemorrhagic strokes these are the major causes uh, in the last stages of the uh, ckd if you see in uh, early stages of ckd uh, stage 3 and above it is the atherosclerotic cardiovascular events and uh, which are more common uh, cause of the death and cad ischemic stroke and the peripheral arterial disease similarly with the increasing stage of uh, ckd the fatality uh, after cvd event also increases The, uh, this is the, from the united state renal data there is we suggest that heart failure is the most common uh, cv comorbidity in patients at any stage of ckd highlighting the role of ckd in uh, precipitating heart failure and the relative risk is uh, equal to the prevalence of C, uh, cvd in ckd patient divided by the prevalence of cvd in non ckd patient and if you see the relative risk in the first graph It is 4.25 percent in uh, heart failure, whereas in AMI it is 4.04, and then it is followed by CAD, CBA, TI, and AF, and the causes of death in patients with CKD. In, in heart failure, in patients with the C, with and without CKD, we'll find uh, without CKD any causes, any stage of CKD, stage one and two, stage three, and stage four and five, and the most common cause of uh, death because of heart failure. in stage 4 and 5 and if you for better understanding we can have a case a history which is a 48 year male with bmi of 32 and without any history of diabetes or major cardiac events having hypertension for several years and has been on hydrochlorothiazide and telemisartan for hypertension and also on statin for dyslipidemia is having the uscr of 2000 and egfr of 40 ml per minute per square meter the person and the family history is were negative for type 2 diabetes and kidney disease autoimmune skin yielding uh, no results the renal ultrasound scan showed kidneys with hyperecogenic uh, renal parenchyma 
The urea analysis exhibited few cells, high line cast in the heavy protein urea. The renal biopsy shows a picture of glomerular nephritis, the IgA nephropathy, or the focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. What should be the next line if you see such patient? The, in spite of using the RAS inhibitor in patients with CKD, the residual risk still remains, as has been uh, seen in renal study, where the residual risk was 43.5%. In, in the IDNT study, it was 32.6%. In microhope, it was 15.3%. And in clinical trial, 93 hope trial, it was 12.1%. Wherein in patients who are having non-diabetic uh, kidney disease, in the end trial, it, the residual risk is still at 21.3%. So in spite of using uh, RAS inhibitor to its full dose, uh, still there are chances that patient is going to have premature death because of this involvement of uh, CKD. So what should be our next step? And uh, what we have seen over a period of time since the invent of uh, these uh, glyphosines, that the, uh, the glyphosines have shown best results because of their pleiotropic effects. They are being used in different diseases, uh, apart from reducing the cardiovascular outcome and uh, reducing the uh, renal outcome. So the trial was planned that to see whether this uh, glyphosine can reduce the mortality in patients of CKD who are not because of diabetes. So the evidence with dapaglifosine in the holistic management of CKD of all cause and etiology. The DAPA CKD was a landmark trial assessing the dapaglifosine in over around 4,300 patients with CKD with or without type 2 diabetes. So the objective was to assess whether treatment with dapaglifosine compared with placebo reduced the risk of renal and the cardiovascular event in patients with CKD or without CKD and who are receiving standard of care including maximum tolerated dose of ACE or ARBs. The key, key, key inclusion criteria were 18 years of age, more than 18 of age, EGFR between 25 and 75, UACR between 200 and 5000 and the stable maximum tolerated dose of ACE and ARBs for more than four weeks with or without two type two diabetes. And the excluding criteria were the type one diabetic, polycystic kidney disease, lupus nephritis, and the associated vasculitis, immunosuppressive uh, therapy more or less than six months prior to the enrollment. They were double blinded. And one group was put on dapaglifosin 10 milligram with standard of care. And second was put on placebo with standard of care. And they were randomized for median period of follow-up of 2.4 years. And the end primary endpoint was Composite of sustained more than 50% EGFR decline or end stage kidney disease or renal or cardiovascular death. And the secondary outcome was, apart from primary, the composite of the cardiovascular death or the hospitalization for heart failure or the all cause mortality. So, the DAPA CKD is the first renal outcome trial to investigate the efficacy and safety of SGL2 inhibitor in patients both with and without type 2 diabetes. And if you compare the number of patients, and with the previous trials, which has happened because uh, to show the cardiovascular safety, there is an empire outcome trial and was uh, and declared to me 58. And later on, the credence with ganagliflozine and now the DAPA CKD. And uh, yesterday, uh, in the, uh, there's a publication in uh, New England Journal of Medicine by the Empire Kidney uh, trial, which has been published. And that is also. Uh, reproduce the same findings which has been depicted in DAPA, in DAPA CKD trial. So if you see uh, the renal outcome trials with credence in the DAPA CKD, both the type 2 diabetes and the mixed population and uh, with EGFR of less than 60 and a USCR of more than 300. The number of patients is much more uh, around 4300 in DAPA CKD and Yesterday's trial, which was published in Ampa Kidney, the patient included was 6,600 patients. So when you see the primary outcome, the sustained more than 50% EGFR decline, and state renal disease, uh, renal or CV death uh, by diabetes status, in diabetic type 2 diabetic patients, the relative risk reduction is 36% with the use of dapaglifosine after 32 weeks of trials, whereas in patients without type 2 diabetes, this related risk reduction is 50%, much more marked than the type 2 diabetes patient. So the, here uh, we see the role of dapaglifosine 
in patients of CKD without type 2 diabetes. The changes in albumin urea by T2 uh, diabetes status, patients with type 2 diabetes, there is 35.1% mean reduction in the UACR with the use of uh, dapagliflozin in type 2 diabetes uh, versus 14.8% uh, mean reduction in the UACR in uh, uh, non-diabetic patients uh, with CKD. So if you do the subgroup analysis, then you will find uh, the primary outcome according to the underlying cause of the kidney disease um, where there is diabetic nephropathy, ischemic or hypertensive nephropathy, globotrin nephropathy and other uh, unknown causes. If you see uh, patients who, who have been on dapagliflozin or with placebo or number of events with dapagliflozin and placebo, the overall uh, events uh, are 4.6 versus 7.5 in placebo. And if you see the hazard ratio, it is 0.61% uh, compared to the placebo. So whether it is diabetic nephropathy, ischemic high or hypertensive nephropathy, global nephritis or uh, global sclerosis, the uh, curve is showing uh, more towards the uh, dapagliflozin favoring and then placebo. The further exploring the effect of dapagliflozin by the cause of kidney disease in DAPA CKD, IgA nephropathy, and these are the trials of DAPA CKD uh, testing or STOP IgA trial, and the number of patients included is highest within DAPA CKD around 270, and then testing at 262 and in STOP IgA 162. The primary outcome in participants with IgA nephropathy, 15% uh, of the patients with the placebo and 4.4% of the patients with dapagliflozin had uh, suffered uh, progression of the disease. Although the separation of curve happens in the very uh, early, that is in the second week, but uh, uh, it is not in favor of dapagliflozin in the first eight weeks, but after eight weeks, the placebo group, uh, the incident rate is higher as compared to the dapagliflozin. So after eight weeks, the results are more in favor of dapagliflozin till the 32 weeks trial. And the hazard ratio is 0 0.29. This is a remarkable increase uh, in the lifespan of patients of IgA nephropathy after using dapagliflozin. So outcome in patients with FSGS, focal segmental uh, glomerulonephritis. And if you see, and the overall with glomerulonephritis with FSGS or biofi confirmed FSGS or kidney specific outcomes or composite or sustained uh, more than 40% EGFR decline uh, and serial disease cardiovascular and all they favor the use of dapagliflozin uh, as compared to uh, placebo. Another subgroup analysis uh, showing the baseline cardiovascular disease with and heart failure. The outcome by baseline cardiovascular disease, the primary endpoint, the EGFR decline of more than 50% and state renal disease. The overall hazard ratio is 0.61% and the cumulative incidence uh, with the use of DAPA CVD uh, and in patient with DAPA uh, without any CVD and placebo with CVD and placebo with non-CVD. And if in secondary uh, endpoint, the hospitalization for heart failure or cardiovascular uh, death the overall uh, the hazard ratio is 0.71% and, and without CVD, uh, it is 0 0.70 and without C uh, with CVD, it is 0.71%. So in the subgroup analysis, again, it is the same finding has been reproduced. The heart failure with uh, or without heart failure, the results with, they are favoring with uh, uh, dapagliflozin. Mm as the hazard ratio is 0.61 percent. DAPA CKD, the CKD stage and diabetes status at the baseline and the type 4, uh, the stage 4 is around 14 percent and the stage 2 and 3 is 86 percent. Where it is in the CKD, the diabetes status, it is 64 percent with type 2 diabetes and 36 percent without uh, type 2 diabetes. And if you see the outcome according to the uh, CKD stages, you will have a uh, uh, different outcome in the stage 2, 3 and different at the stage 3 and uh, stage 4. But the, all they favor uh, the use of dapagliflozin. Uh,
The EGFR decline over the study by the baseline, if you see the CKD, in the acute phase, that is the first 12 weeks, the first two weeks, there is decline in the EGFR. But uh, then further uh, in the chronic phase, there is no decline in the e e EGFR. And uh, in stage 4, it is 1.82. And in stage 2 and 3, it is 1.94. The total EGFR reduction is 1.23 versus 0.89 in stage 3 and 4. So overall, there are numerous mechanisms that may be driving uh, the renoprotective effect of the SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, the glomerular pressure reduction uh, by increasing the uh, tubular glomerular feedback, by reducing the glomerular hyperfiltration, and by reducing the uh, sodium hydrogen exchanger 3, and then another neurohormonal uh, improvement that this reduction in the intradental uh, RAS activity and sympathetic nervous uh, activity reduction, then inflammatory or the fibrosis reduction, uh, these reduced inflammatory markers, these reduced uh, uh, extracellular matrix uh, deregulation markers, and this improved uh, tubular oxygenation they, by reducing the solute transport, by increasing the oxygen delivery, and by increasing erythropoiesis. So all this leads to the protection against the diabetic nephropathy and thereby it uh, stabilization of the EGFR, there's reduction in the albumin urea, there's reduction in the blood pressure and reduction in the tubular glomerular injury and the reduction in the renal ischemic injury. There's in increase in the hemoglobin and the hematocrit level. So these are the clinical effects which has been seen with the use of SGLT2 inhibitor in patients with chronic kidney diseases. The practical provider guide to initiating the SGL2 inhibitor in patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD is we need to first assess the patient and whether the patient is eligible or not. The patient selection is very important. Then we intervene and then we have to follow up. Then we must uh, tell the patient about uh, the glycemic effect, the hy hypoglycemia risk. If the patient is having simultaneously the use of insulin or sulfonylurea or the history of uh, severe hypoglycemia or the HV1C is uh, at or below goal. And the volume depletion is another risk factor which is by the use of SGL meter. So that this, if patient is having concluded use of diuretic and then we should be careful or any history of acute kidney injury is there, then we should be very careful in using SGL meter. So then we should intervene by giving low dose SGLT2 inhibitor by the use of canaglifrozin 100 milligram DAPA 10 or MPAR 10. And we should educate the patient by sick day protocol, perioperative care and the foot care. And we should educate the patient regarding hypoglycemia and another education by volume depletion symptoms consider and diuretic is stopping. And we should follow up the patient, assess the adverse effects, review the knowledge, anticipate an acute drop in the EGFR, which is generally not a reason to stop the SGLT2 inhibitor. And we should ask about the hypoglycemia symptoms or we should reduce the dose of sulfonylurea or insulin if needed. So DAPA CKD expands the cardiorenal benefit of DAPA glyphosate to the patients with CKD. It has been proved and declared uh, to me 58 in DAPA HF and DAPA CKD. And the patient population uh, in DAPA uh, declared uh, to me 58 uh, patient was atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease around 40%, uh, multiple risk factor was 60%, in DAPA HF and EGFR more than 30%, uh, and then DAPA CKD, EGFR between 25 to 75%. The glycemic status with diabetes, two diabetes in declare in the DAPA HF with 40% or with 50% type 2 diabetes without diabetes, and in DAPA CKD, 68% with diabetes and 32% without diabetes. The average EGFR in DAPA CKD was 43 ml, 66 ml in DAPA HF, and 85 ml in DECLARE to me 58. Primary endpoint in DECLARE was hospitalization of heart failure or the cardiovascular death, and CV death and worsening of heart failure in DAPA HF or in DAPA, DAPA CKD, it is more than 50% decline in EGFR and state renal disease or the CV death. The key endpoints, the EGFR decreased by more than 40%, or less than 60 in uh, 
Dapa HF, more than 50% sustained decline in EGFR or in renal death. In Dapa CKD, CB death or heart failure hospitalization. The select outcome from the DAPA CKD and AMPA uh, kidney trials. If you see the outcome and the primary endpoint in DAPA CKD and AMPA, CKD, AMPA, AMPA kidney trial, in composite of more than 50% sustained EGFR decline was there, whereas in AMPA kidney, it is composite of more than 40% sustained EGFR decline is there. In DAPA CKD, the number of patients is 4,300, whereas it is 6,600 in AMPA kidney trial. The Relative risk reduction is 39% uh, uh, with DAPA CKD, whereas it is 28% uh, in AMPA kidney trial. The all cause death is 33% reduction, relative risk reduction in DAPA CKD, whereas it is 13 point in uh, AMPA kidney disease uh, trial. The composite of the CV death or the hospitalization of heart failure is 29% uh, relative risk reduction, whereas it is 16 point a 16% relative risk reduction in epochrine trial, which has been published yesterday. How can we ensure the efficacy or the outcome uh, by choosing the uh, innovative or research agents? So the, uh, the process of development, it takes 12 to 13 years for the development of a drug. Uh, from the discovery or preclinical trial to the clinical studies for six to seven years, then regulatory review and the post marketing surveillance. The drug development uh, of new drug is a complex and the costly process. It generally takes 10 to 15 years, and the studies have shown that it costs between the US uh, $800 million to $2 billion to get new drug in the market. So, what does evidence suggest that there is a pharmaceutical uh, equivalence? with stability in the dissolution testing, then bioequivalence or the therapeutic equivalence. While the active pharmaceutical ingredient does not differ between the originator and the generic medicine, other ingredients known as excipients may be different and the number of pharmaceutical recipients are known to have side effect or the kind of indications. So dapaglifosine is a chiral molecule with five stereogenic uh, centers. Having the right stereogenic center is the key for appropriate bioavailability, rate of metabolism, metabolites, excretion, potency and selectivity for the receptors, transporters and for the coenzymes and toxicity. In summary, in non-diabetic CKD, which includes etiologies like hypertension, cardiac ischemia, glomerulonephritis, assertive nephropathy, etc., account for around 50%, 58% of the CKD incidence. DAPA CKD was the first trial to include patients with non diabetic CKD etiology and demonstrated significant 50% reduction in the primary composite point outcome in this patient population. The therapy also showed reduction in the primary renal endpoints in other subgroup like base CV disease and heart failure and also in stage 4 CKD. The benefits shown in the DAPA CKD trial for all cause mortality and CV death um, hospitalization heart failure were not replicated by AMPA kidney trial with AMPA glyphosine. There can be an important therapeutic difference in the efficacy of generic drug versus the original research grants if the right isomer is not selected. Thank you. This is all from myself.